Welcome back to question three, where we discuss kinematic motion in one dimension. This time the question reads, two trains are traveling along a straight track, one behind the other. The first train is traveling 12 meters per second. The second train approaching from the rear is traveling at 20 meters per second. When the second train is 200 meters behind the first, the operator applies the brakes, producing a constant deceleration of 0.20 meters per second squared. So that pertains to the second train. In part A, will the trains collide, and if so, where and when? And in part B, if the second train has an initial velocity of 25 meters per second, find the collision time. Let's make a quick illustration of what's going on. So we have a train, which I'll represent by this rectangle, and it has two wheels. This one is 200 meters behind train two. So I'll call this train one, and this is train two. The speed of train two is constant. It's traveling 12 meters per second. So V initial and V final for train two is 12 meters per second. And when there's a constant speed, the acceleration is equal to zero. For this train, its speed, the moment the brakes are activated, I'll call that V initial, is 20 meters per second. It has an acceleration of negative 0.20 meters per second because it's deceleration, it's slowing down. So I'll write down negative 0.20 meters per second squared. To find the final distance of train one, which I'll represent as x, we can take the velocity it's velocity when the brakes are first activated, 20 meters per second, and multiply it by the time. Because if we multiply the speed by time, we get distance. So multiplying these two, we should end up with a distance. And in case you're confused, I am referring to this formula to find the final distance. So I have the initial distance, let's call it zero. Okay, so let's say that the point at which the train activates the brakes is when x is equal to zero. The final is represented as x. We don't know it, so we have x minus zero, or simply x, is equal to the speed times the time plus 0 0.5 times the acceleration, which we determined to be negative 0.20 and that's meters per second squared, multiply to time squared. So if we have the time, we could technically find out how far this train has gone after t amount of time has passed. We're not interested in that right now. What I'm interested next is to write an expression for the distance at which this train is moving after t seconds. So again, the distance of this the initial distance is positive 200. So we have x minus 200. So let's say that if this was on an xy plot, just so that you get a better idea, the moment that the brakes are activated, that's when x is equal to zero. When the brakes are also activated, this train is 200 meters ahead. So its initial distance is 200, which is why I replace this variable with 200. It just happens to be minus 200 because of the formula. That's equal to its speed, and its speed is 12 meters per second times t. I'm not going to include the units because now you get the idea. The acceleration of this train is zero. I said that earlier because the speed is constant. So all of this part of the equation of the formula becomes zero because anything times zero makes zero. If I rearrange for x, I get the following. So I'll take that over. I have x is equal to 12t plus 200. So this is the final distance of this train after t seconds, and this is the final distance of this train after t seconds. If you want to find out whether the two trains will collide, you have to set the two x values equal to each other. If you set them equal to each other and you solve for t, if you end up with a t value, that suggests that in some point in time, their distances will be equal. So from here, we can set this expression equal to that expression and solve for t. So I have 20t plus 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.2. 
t squared is equal to 12t plus 200. Let's see if we can actually end up with a t value. And that would suggest that they collide. I'll bring all the terms to one side. Doesn't matter which side you choose. We're just using our math skills from here. We have 20t multiplying 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.2 makes negative 0.10t squared. Minus 12t, these two terms are alike, we'll combine them soon. Bringing this term over makes it negative 200, and that's equal to 0. Let me simplify this equation a little further. I'll write down negative 0.10t squared. Combining these two, I get positive 8t minus 200 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic, and so you would have to use the quadratic formula to find out what t is. Although there is a feature on most scientific calculators that enables you to find out the roots of a quadratic. For me, you click mode 5, 3, and you type in 0 point, negative 0 0.10, 8, and negative 200. Remember, if we get a t value, that means they collide. If we don't, then they don't collide. As you see, my calculator gives me an output with the letter i. This is imaginary letter i, which means that it's not a real root. Therefore, there is no value for t, and the two trains do not collide. To answer part b, if the second train has an initial velocity of 25 meters squared. So in this case, they are saying the second train for us, I set the second train as the one that was trailing. So let's not get confused here. This time, rather than 20, it's 25, even faster. Let's redo that calculation and see what the time is. Remember, rather than 20, it's 25. So 25 minus 12 makes 13. Let's change that to 13 and redo that calculation. So what changed was that middle term. I'll make that into 13. And I end up with a T value of 112 decimal 16. So I'll just write down 112 seconds, and the other t value is 17. Of these two, I will omit 112 seconds, because remember a quadratic is a parabola and you should get up to two roots, and depending on the context of your question, you might have to reject one of them. 17 seconds makes more sense to us because it's the earlier time. So they will collide at 17 seconds, and that solves the question.